Hi, I'm Ben, and today I'm joined by Kevin from our dev team. This video will build on our last Trader API tutorial, where we went through the SDK installation and started one data stream. If you haven't already watched that yet, you can find a link to that video in the description below. So let's dive right into one of the Solana DEX projects that was recently implemented to the Trader API. What do you think, Kevin? Which project should we cover today? Yeah, thanks, Ben. Uh, let's talk about the Drift project today. Awesome, perfect. Uh, so I know that Drift is the first perpetual market on the Solana network and that we're super excited to be supporting it. Uh, but before we jump in, I just wanted to ask whether we support all three SDKs for the Drift project. Yeah, we do. All right, cool. So uh, let's kick things off with the different endpoints available through uh, the Trader API. Uh, yeah, sounds good. So if you go to our documentation website, you can see that we list all the Solana DEX projects that we either have implemented support for or will be supported. And you can see here, uh, we have the Drift uh, Perpetual Futures uh, page, and you can see here is the list of all the endpoints. So we have a variety of endpoints that you can query the current state of the Drift uh, markets, like query the order books, contract and assets, as well as a bunch of endpoints for you to manage your position. So either by creating new positions or managing your collateral. And then we also have uh, functionality for streaming these order books as well. But this is just our first release. We have more endpoints that are still under development. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for walking us through that. Um, can you show us a demo and so we can see it in action? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. So I have the Drift uh, website put up right now so you can kind of see uh, what functionality we're, we're providing that you would do otherwise that you could otherwise do in the um, uh, the web application. Um, but like, you know, if you want to use our APIs and SDKs to program to a bot or something, that would make it a lot easier. So just make this uh, useful. I've set up a couple of accounts beforehand. Uh, in Drift, you can have a number of sub accounts. So I have a, a main account and two sub accounts. And I've just deposited five uh, USD into each of these. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can see the list here. Uh, and this is just for demonstration purposes. So sure. what I'm going to demo here is the Go uh, SDK and uh, show you kind of how to do a couple of different things uh, with it to interact with the Drift program. So I just have a small project being set up here. Uh, I've just copied the addresses of my uh, both. This is my Solana wallet and my various sub accounts here just for convenience for this mm -hmm. demo. But I guess as we get started, let me actually show you how to get uh, all of your accounts. So um, if you remember from our previous video, this is how you initialize the gRPC client to connect to the Trader API. And so once we have this client initialized, we can use uh, a method like get assets to get a list of all the assets that we have deposited. So I, like I said, I have three accounts right now and they each should have about $5 in them. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll just print off the result here. And yeah, you see the, the arguments of uh, this get asset request are just the owner address, which is my Solana wallet, and then what project, so I'm going to drift. And then if I want to filter it further, if I already knew my sub account addresses, I could put them in here. So let's just run this. Um, oh, sorry, I have the wrong configuration set right now. Uh, just one quick note, uh, I'm showing you a demo uh, from our testnet right now because we have a couple of new exciting things that are coming to our testnet that uh, we haven't quite pushed production yet. Uh, so yeah, have my authorization set up for a testnet. Um, I think I showed this in the last video as well, but just uh, so you know, there's two environment variables that need to be set. One is the auth header and the other one is the private key. Auth header is just for you to authenticate against the blocks route BDN, so whatever account you have with us. And then the private key is if you need to actually do transactions with your Solana account, like I'll demo later. But you can see here, uh, here's the information about the assets of my account. So you can see this is my owner address. And then there are three sections here that are each, uh, here, let me just copy this out to read, so it's a little bit easier to read. Um, like this you can see i have uh three account balances and three accounts and these are my two sub accounts that i mentioned earlier you can see sub account one and two 
and this is just the address of my main account. Uh, yeah, just it just right. matches what we what we have here. Um, okay, so now that we've seen how to get uh, the asset balance uh, for each of your sub accounts, let's actually do something with the. Uh, with, with Drift. So the first thing you probably want to do once you create an account on Drift is to deposit some collateral in so you'll be able to start placing uh, perpetual orders and you know actually doing stuff with your account. We have $5 now, but we'll just deposit a little bit more just to you know, demonstrate how this works. So let's delete the code that we've had here to get our assets. And let me copy in a section to for depositing collateral. Okay, so let's break down what we have here. Uh, this is just a call to manage collateral. So this endpoint that we have here lets you decide what you want to do with your collateral. So the step that we're going to take a look at first is just deposit, but you can also do things like withdraw or transfer. And the currency that we're going to do is sold here. So we're going to do this to our sub account one. And basically what we expect this transaction to do is to uh, you know, deposit a so I'm 0 0.01 sold, uh, so it's like around $20-ish right now. So we expect to get like 20 cents in uh, to the to sub account number one. So we'll run this, uh, get back a transaction. We can look up the transaction on SolScan, and then we can verify that the it's it's been executed and the, the balance is reflected in our account. Um, so yeah, if you look at SolScan here, Okay, so it looks like the transaction is here. So, and yeah, if you look at the Drift UI again, you can see that our sub account balance has been updated. We're back up to 523. Or sorry, we went up from 5 to 523, about the worth of 0 0.01 sold. Um, so, yeah, I guess since we did that, let's also uh, withdraw it. So, we can change deposit to withdraw, uh, run it again to submit another transaction. And we should see the balance decrease back to the original amount, five dollars. Um, just give it one moment to. Okay, yeah, here we go. Okay, yeah. So you can see the transaction has been committed here again, and then the balance is now back down to five dollars. Okay, so that's how you manage collateral uh, with uh, the trade API in Drift. Let's take a look at actually creating orders now. So I'll copy another segment of code. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to submit a perp order. Uh, let me just show you what the equivalent behavior is on the UI. So suppose we go to the Drift UI. Uh, this is if we wanted to, let's say, like set a limit order at some price, and we wanted to, you know, do it for uh, zero point, uh, do a long or short as the, the specific price for this amount of soul in USDC. So here's what I'm going to do, right? Just these parameters. We have the Drift project, and then the person that's submitting it, which is again uh, me since uh, it has come from your wallet. We'll do it with the sole perp. We're going to place a long, so it's either a long or short. And then we want to place a limit order, uh, yeah, as opposed to market, trigger market, or trigger limit. And then we're going to do it uh, for amount of 0 0.1 sole at the price of, the, the price is going to be the position that we want. So let me set this transaction again. And then what we expect to see is uh, once we go to positions, We'll select sub account one, and we expect to see an open order here that's created. So let me just, uh, all right, here's the transaction. All right, cool. And then, so yeah, it's been created here uh, the at the size of 0 0.1 soul. And, oh, sorry, the open order, it's, it's this one, not the, not the one, but this position was created earlier just to have something to show here. Uh, so you can see that the limit, uh, the price is $20 and then it's at 0 0.1. So we're waiting for it to be filled. Okay. We've created an order. Let's cancel it as well now.
So just for simplicity, we're just going to cancel all of our orders since we only have one. Uh, and then, but if uh, we had more than one order, we might need multiple transactions or multiple transactions in order to cancel all the orders. Uh, so I'll just run it uh, again. The parameters are very similar to before. We're just doing it on the sole perpetual market for our address, and then for sub account one, we have the signature. And yeah, I guess you can see the the order just vanished here because we just canceled it. Uh, even before soul scan has loaded the transaction. Okay, those awesome. are kind of the main. Sorry, go ahead. No, I just said awesome. Cool. Uh, so those are the main kind of uh, operations that you want to do. The the last thing that I want to demo here is how you would actually get information about the market in order to make your decision. So the main thing that you probably want to see is the order book. So. That, that's kind of like the, the basic information, right? You want to see the state of the market and then based on that, determine like if you want to uh, you know, do anything. So I have another sample here to get the order book stream. Uh, so yeah, this is again, uh, we're just going to get an order book stream and then what the stream, the trade API provides is essentially like every time there's an update to the stream, so, sorry, an update to the order book. Uh, let's say someone either places or cancels an order, you will be you will get an update on the stream immediately. Uh, right now, I'm just let me. There's a limit here to if you want. Let me do it to like fifty or something. The, the drift order books tend to be very big, so it's a little bit hard to read if we just uncap this limit. But let's let's restrict it to fifty for now, and we can run this, and then we'll get these order book updates. And then every update we get. Uh, you can expect something different in them. It's, it's, it's going to be a little bit hard to tell uh, just because there's so much text here. Uh, but let's see, can we actually find the three different? OK, let's make this a little easier. We'll, we'll print a line between these to make it so we can see all the different updates. OK, yeah, you can see this is update three. Uh, update two, and then update one. So there were you know, three operations that were done there. Uh, you know, again, I, I think I showed this on the last video as well, but you'll see that the slot number is sometimes uh, the same between two of them. And that's because, or these, these are actually all distinct, but in uh, you might see that the slot uh, numbers are the same because the data stream that we provide is very, uh, we, we essentially like will provide multiple updates per block as they get processed since they're are potentially multiple transactions in a particular block in Solana that may be relevant to Drift. And we just want to emit these updates as quickly as possible. Uh, yeah, I think that should be it for this demo. Anything else, Ben? Uh, no, I think that's all. Thanks, show Thank you so much for showing us all of that, Kevin. Uh, and for our viewers, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us on Discord or Telegram using the links below.